Yo, what is good, Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we are going to be doing another mock drafts. This is three mock drafts in a row. This time we're continuing our 10 team PPR mock drafts. We already did a 10 team PPR mock draft from the first overall pick. This time we're going to be doing it at the second overall pick. So if you are not aware of Sleeper.app, it is basically a desktop website and they also have a mobile app where you can host your leagues, do your drafts, and you can also do mock drafts there. And the reason why I like Sleeper is because it is very aesthetically pleasing and because their ADPs are more up to date than most other places. I'm not being sponsored to say this. I'm not being paid. This is just how I truly feel and it's why I'm doing my mock drafts on Sleeper. So I will leave a link in the description below if you'd like to check out this website or app, it is great and I do encourage you to host your leagues here, try it out a little, do a mock draft or two on here, and yeah, let's get right into the mock draft. All right, so Christian McCaffrey goes first overall. That's not a surprise at all. That goes about 90% of the times Christian McCaffrey goes first overall, and then in pretty much every draft, Saquon Barkley goes second overall. And that's how it's going to be this time because we are going to take Saquon Barkley in this draft. He's safer than Zeke and Kamara. Kamara is a little more touchdown dependent than Zeke or Saquon are. Zeke has Mike McCarthy coming in as a new head coach in Dallas. And he hasn't always liked to run the ball that much. Sure, he's never had a running back as good as Zeke. But nonetheless, he always does like to pass the ball. And we just don't really want to take that risk with Zeke if we have Saquon Barkley available. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Zeke this year, but there's no reason to take him over Saquon Barkley when Saquon is arguably the most talented running back in the entire NFL and will never not produce just because of a situation. So we are going to take Saquon Barkley here. After he goes, Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs both go ahead of Kamara and Zeke, then Michael Thomas, Zeke, Dalvin Cook, Kenyon Drake, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, Tyree Kill, Miles Sanders, Devontae Adams, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler, Alvin Kamara goes at the 207, and Patrick Mahomes goes right before my pick. Now, I know now you're thinking, sleeper is awful, Alvin Kamara went at the 207, don't worry, it doesn't normally do this. His ADP, as you just saw a minute ago, was in the early first round, which is where it should be. So this is just the CPU doing some things that aren't adhering completely to the ADP that they have, which normally I'm a fan of. I normally like the CPUs not doing exactly what the ADP says because that's what happens in real life, right? In your real drafts, you don't have everyone looking at the same sheet with the same ADP picking off whoever is at the very top of that list. That's not what happens. Now, is this going to happen where Alvin Kamara goes to the 207? Probably not. Maybe he'll fall to the 208, excuse me, maybe he'll fall to the 108, 109, and that's crazy enough. The 207, that's just not going to happen in your league. So this was a little out of the ordinary. Same with Josh Jacobs at the 104. That's a little unusual, but generally speaking, Sleeper is completely fine. It doesn't normally do this, I promise. Besides that, Hopkins, Julio, Tyreek all go ahead of Devontae Adams. That is not a smart move at all. Devontae Adams should be the number two overall wide receiver taken, and Hopkins and Julio also probably shouldn't be taken ahead of Tyreek Hill. I did an entire video about Devontae Adams versus DeAndre Hopkins, explaining exactly why Devontae Adams has to be taken ahead of DeAndre Hopkins. So when you're done with this video, maybe go check out that video because it is a very important video because I'm telling you, taking DeAndre Hopkins this early instead of Devontae Adams is going to lose you your league. I can promise you that. But let's get into our pick. So quarterback, Lamar is there. I'm not a fan of using a second round pick on him, especially in a 10 team league though. So we're gonna stay away from him. At running back, Aaron Jones and CEH are both there. There is a chance that I could get both of them I doubt that that would happen. I'm pretty sure that team one would take whichever one I didn't take. 
but there is a chance that I take, let's say, Aaron Jones, and Team 1 takes maybe Travis Kelsey and a wide receiver, and then I get CEH. There is a chance that that happens, but it's pretty unlikely. At wide receiver, Chris Godwin is there. I like him. I do think that there's a good chance that he doesn't do as good this season as he did last season, but that's not really a big concern because he was a beast last season. Even though Tom Brady's coming in, which is a huge upgrade compared to Jameis Winston, for fantasy football, he's probably not as good as Jameis Winston just because all of those interceptions that Jameis Winston throws means that they just need to throw even more later in the game. Because if Jameis Winston goes 80 yards downfield and throws a pick in the red zone, Chris Godwin might have already had one or two catches on that possession. And in the next possession, since they just gave up maybe even a pick six, now they have to throw it even more and they keep throwing to Chris Godwin. So those interceptions are actually good for fantasy football. And not to mention, I doubt Tom Brady's going to throw for 5,100 yards and 33 touchdowns like Jameis did. So I do think that Tom Brady is a downgrade for fantasy football than Jameis Winston. But nonetheless, Tom Brady loves his slot receivers. And I do think that Chris Godwin should get more targets with Tom Brady being there than Jameis Winston. The only difference is he might not have as many red zone targets and his average depth of throw or average depth of target probably won't be as high as it was with Jameis Winston. So there will be a fraction of a yard less per reception with Chris Godwin being a receiver under Tom Brady than Jameis Winston, but I still think he should be fine, but I'm not going to take any of the other receivers there in the second round. Travis Kelsey is there, but of course Travis Kelsey or Kittle should be there by my next pick, so if I really want one of them, I can easily wait until my next pick. So I like Aaron Jones, I like CEH, I like Chris Godwin, and I like Kelsey and Kittle. One of Kelsey or Kittle should be there. I prefer Kelsey for sure. Aaron Jones and CEH, one of them should be there, but I would definitely prefer Aaron Jones just because we know he's elite and everything. And at wide receiver, Chris Godwin is the only one there. So I'm thinking maybe we take Godwin and hope that either Aaron Jones or Travis Kelsey is there especially because since this is a 10-team mock draft and not 12-team, at the end of the fourth round, I'm pretty sure that Chris Carson will be there or Le'Veon Bell. So I'm okay if we don't get Aaron Jones here, considering that we already have one of the best running backs in all of fantasy with Saquon Barkley. So we are going to take Chris Godwin here, and let's hope that Aaron Jones or Kelsey is there. And Aaron Jones is there. Kelsey gets taken. No worries at all. I'm not going to take Kittle here over Aaron Jones, just because it is a 10-team league, so with an early third-round pick in a 12-team mock draft, he might be worth it, but 10-team mock draft, not quite worth it. It's a little higher, and I absolutely love the value late into drafts at tight end. I think Noah Fant has a ton of potential, a little risky for sure, same with TJ Hawkinson, but I think Jacecki is very safe. I think Goddard is incredibly safe, If you're going to take a risky tight end, but who has a ton of potential, I think Goddard is a phenomenal backup because he is guaranteed 10 points per game, no matter what. And if Zach Ertz goes down, Goddard is instantly a top three tight end. Seriously, Goddard is a phenomenal pick. You can pair him with anyone, especially if you're going to take a tight end on the riskier side with Noah Fant, TJ Hawkinson, even Tyler Higby or Hayden Hurst. So... A lot of value late into the draft at tight end, so I'm not going to take Kittle. And at wide receiver, we already got Godwin, so no need there. Plus, there is a lot of value at wide receiver in the fourth and fifth round, especially in 10-team mocks. I love DJ Moore. I love Calvin Ridley. I love Robert Woods. And even the guys down here, I love McLaurin. I love Parker. I love Michael Gallup. I love Tyler Boyd. I just talked about these guys on my Twitter account. If you don't follow me there, definitely go give me a follow there because I put out a lot of content there daily. I do put out daily videos here, but I put out even more content on Twitter. So 
I'll link that in the description below if you'd like to check me out there. But getting back to our pick, we have Aaron Jones and CEH, but CEH is a rookie, and sure, he's on Kansas City, but if he just absolutely sucks, which could happen considering he is a rookie and we have never seen him play at the NFL level, and he got the privilege of playing on LSU's offense where it's virtually impossible for anyone to fail there, we don't know exactly how good he's going to be. We know Aaron Jones is great. We know he is the most efficient red zone running back as of the last few years. So yes, there are a little bit of concerns about Aaron Jones for me. He has gotten hurt a little bit and we don't know how pass heavy this team's going to go. For all we know, since they have Aaron Rodgers, who's one of the best quarterbacks in the league, they could just be throwing it all over the place. I don't think that's going to happen because they have a lot of talent at running back and they just drafted A.J. Dillon, which does lead me to something that I'm concerned about a lot, A.J. Dillon. I won't say I'm hugely concerned about him, but he is there and he's massive. He's 247 pounds, so he certainly can be a monster on the goal line. So that is a little bit concerning for Aaron Jones, but in the third round, you're not going to find anyone who's not a little bit concerning. So there's less concerns about Aaron Jones than anyone else here. So let's go with Aaron Jones because he certainly has top three running back potential. No doubt about it. Then CEH goes, followed by Mike Evans, Melvin Gordon, David Johnson, Lamar Jackson, Kittle goes, Adam Thielen, Amari Cooper, Leonard Fournette, three wide receivers go in a row, Galladay, Cooper Cup, and DJ Moore. Chris Carson goes, Juju goes, Le'Veon Bell goes, and Jonathan Taylor goes. And by the way, guys, if you want to be in one of my videos or multiple of my videos, because I'm going to do this multiple times a week, basically, I'm going to have mock drafts with you guys also being there. And I'm going to give some analysis on a lot of picks, and I'm going to grade each team at the very end. So you can be in one of my videos. If you want to be in one of my videos, all you have to do is go follow me on Twitter. And basically, I'll just put out a tweet saying I'm going to have a mock draft with 11 of you guys or maybe 9 of you guys if it's a 10-team mock draft, 13 of you guys if it's a 14-team mock draft. You get the point. And first come, first serve. If you DM me early enough, then you are going to get a link to this mock draft. And you can be in my video. You'll be drafting there and it'll go up on my YouTube channel. And I'll do some analysis on some of your picks and I will give your entire team a team grade A, B, C, D, or F with pluses and minuses probably. And yeah, you can be in one of my videos. All you have to do is follow me on Twitter because if you want to actually see my tweet saying that first 11, first 9, first 13 people to DM me, then obviously you have to be following me to see that tweet. So go click that link in the description below to follow me. And once you've done that, then the next time that you see me sending out a tweet telling people to DM me if they want to join my mock draft, be one of the first people and you will be in my mock draft. By the way, if you're seeing this after I publish this video, no worries because I'm not just having one of these. I'm going to have these all throughout the off season. And even if you're seeing this in a year from now or two years from now, I'm probably doing these too. So feel free to give me a follow because I guarantee you I will be doing some of these whenever you are watching this. So yeah, be prepared for that. Go follow me on Twitter and you have overall a pretty good chance of being in a mock draft with me because I'm going to do so many every single off season. So yeah, but now let's get back into the draft. So I did expect Le'Veon Bell or Chris Carson to be here by my fourth round pick, but it didn't happen. But there is no worries about that at all because we already took two running backs early. So I do think that we have our fourth round pick here and then our fifth round pick. I think that at our sixth round pick, either Kareem Hunt or Cam Akers could be there. If not, Darius Geis should definitely be there, who is certainly risky. I was not big on him at all last year because of that torn ACL. All studies show that the year after you tear your ACL, you have an extremely increased chance of getting re-injured, but he is two years removed from that injury, so I am a little higher on him this season than I was last season, but I still would prefer Kareem Hunt or Cam Akers. But let's take a look at other positions. 
at wide receiver. Oil Beckham is there. Allen Robinson is there. Calvin Ridley is there. I like Calvin Ridley more than any of them. A.J. Brown is there for a little more risky play, but certainly top five wide receiver upside. Robert Woods is there for a very safe play. And other guys like Shark, like McLaurin, should be there in the sixth round for sure. So we're not even going to bother with that. At tight end, Mark Andrews is there. The first overall pick took Kelsey. So if we want a tight end, there's no reason to take one right now because we should easily get one with our next pick. If the first overall team takes Mark Andrews, that's just a mistake. So at quarterback, no value there. Running back, although Connor has upside, I'm not a huge fan of taking him this early. Montgomery, I am higher on him than Connor because I feel like he's a little safer, but I don't think he's worth a late fourth round pick. At wide receiver, I love Calvin Ridley. I think he's definitely worth it. And I do not want to miss out on him because that first overall team does not have a wide receiver. There is a chance they take Calvin Ridley and I don't want to possibly miss out on him. So we're going to go with Calvin Ridley. And the reason why I'm so high on him is because he outscored Julio Jones in standard and PPR format through week 14 because he got injured and he missed week 15, 16, and 17. Now, he didn't outscore him in PPR scoring on a points per game basis. He barely got outscored in points per game. So if we just look at the time when Julio and Calvin Ridley played together, even though Ridley did outscore him in standard, I believe, he didn't in PPR, he did not, but it was so close. It was within like about half a point. And now you add on a year to Julio Jones's age, which is bad because he's getting on the end of his prime and you add on an extra year to Calvin Ridley's age, which is good because he's just getting into his prime, I think that's a great situation, and it's absolutely phenomenal. So give me Calvin Ridley here. I want to secure him for sure. And now the first overall team takes James Conner and Odell Beckham. No worries because I was not targeting any of them. Now we have to decide. There's a few ways that we can go here. If we're looking at wide receiver, we already have two really good wide receivers. So even though I generally like Robert Woods more than A.J. Brown, it might be worth it to go with A.J. Brown, who's a little riskier because we already have two really good wide receivers that I like, so we can afford to take that risk. We don't need to play it super safe with Robert Woods. At running back, it is a little risky to just hope that Kareem Hunt or Cam Akers is there by our next pick. And even if we take David Montgomery here, if Kareem Hunt or Cam Akers is here at our next pick, I'd probably want to take them too because you can never have too many running backs. Not to mention that is my RB4, so it's not like I'm I've not it's not like I've taken 5 running backs already. So there is some room to get more running backs here for sure. I'm debating taking my RB3 and David Montgomery and running backs can get hurt pretty easily, and Aaron Jones is a little risky. David Montgomery still has some question marks around him, so it would never hurt to take another running back. But at wide receiver, sure, I would like Robert Woods or A.J. Brown, but at my next pick, I know that Terry McLaurin or DJ Shark is going to be there, and if not, I'm a thousand percent sure that Devontae Parker and Michael Gallup will be there not only by my next pick, but also with my seventh round pick. So I can afford to pass up on a wide receiver. It's really just between tight end and running back. Do I want to take David Montgomery or do I want to take Mark Andrews? Well, the thing is, there's just so much value late into drafts at tight end that for me, even though I feel a lot more confident with Mark Andrews, I also feel confident with Dallas Goddard and or Noah Fant and or TJ Hawkinson and all those guys in the 13th round. If we want to take a look at not even 13th round, let's take a look at 10th round running backs. We come across guys like Tevin Coleman, like Philip Lindsay, like Carrion Johnson. I'm not super excited to have these guys if I think that there's a chance that I'm going to start them. I'm not super confident in them. Now, do I like James White? I do. 
But would I want to start him? Absolutely not. I don't even want to have him as a possible backup. He want, I want him to be my absolute last resort player to put in my flex if I have three buys on the same week and two injuries. That's what I want him to be. If Dallas Goddard is my starting tight end, I'm completely fine with that. I don't care. He was getting 10 points consistently last year. And if Zach Ertz goes down, then I have a top three tight end right there. So we're going to go with the running back. And David Montgomery was surprisingly pretty good last season. Now, the Bears did not use him properly, which for all I know, maybe they won't use him that well again this year either. But I do think that since they drafted him and clearly liked him, they probably know how he should be used and he needs to be used in the shotgun formation. In 2018, before the Bears drafted Montgomery, they ran, I believe, the third most run plays, or at least they had the third highest run percentage in shotgun formation. With David Montgomery, they were just about average, and that makes no sense because David Montgomery is a vision guy and he needs to be used in the shotgun. You see guys like Le'Veon Bell who are known for their phenomenal vision, and they are used in the shotgun formation. That's what needs to happen with David Montgomery. And if we look at his numbers, David Montgomery ranked 13th in evaded tackles, 13th in juke rate. That is pretty good. We can also see he was 17th in yards created. That's not bad at all. And he was used a lot in the goal line, even though they weren't even using him correctly. So he wasn't producing that much. So I love David Montgomery. They want to use him and he was good as long as they use him correctly. I think he should absolutely pay off. So we are gonna take David Montgomery. Allen Robinson goes, Devin Singletary, AJ Brown, Mark Andrews, Kareem Hunt, Raheem Mostert, Tyler Lockett, Cam Akers. I wish I could get Cam Akers or Kareem Hunt, but it looks like we're not. Robert Woods, Kyler Murray, Mark Andrews almost falls to me. That would have been exciting. DK Metcalf, McLaurin goes, who I really wanted, T.Y. Hilton and Stephon Diggs. All right, so I would say that I was underestimating how many teams are in this draft because all the players who I've wanted just went before me and not even a few picks before, but a lot of times a half around before. So I know you guys are thinking I'm just underestimating how many picks are before my next pick. But the reality is if you look at their ADPs, they shouldn't be going this early. They really shouldn't. Kareem Hunt is not normally going there. Neither is Cam Akers, but they are now because the CPU just wants to take all my players. And same with Terry McLaurin. He is, I'm 99% sure, yeah, he's ranked lower than Keenan Allen, than DJ Chark, than Debo Samuel, than AJ Green, than Marquise Brown, than Devontae Parker. And I'm pretty sure he's also lower than Brandon Cooks, but I'm not sure about that. But he should not have went. But it's completely fine, because like I said, we have DJ Shark. We have Devontae Parker. I like all those guys, so there's no worries there. But looking at running back, even though I am not completely satisfied with having Darius Geis as even a flex player, he's not going to be my flex player. It's okay. And if he gets re-injured or just sucks, it's not the end of the world. Because I have three other running backs who I like, Saquon, Aaron Jones, and David Montgomery. So it's not the end of the world if Darius Geis goes. Now, there's other guys who I sort of like, like Alexander Madison, like Matt Breida, like James White, like Ronald Jones, but one or two of them will be there by my, not next pick, but the round after that. So my eighth round pick. So we don't need to even consider taking them with our next pick. They're just not worth it then. But I don't absolutely love having one of those guys who I listed to be right behind David Montgomery. I do think Darius Geis is on a tier higher than all those guys because if Darius Geis can stay healthy and if the Redskins use Antonio Gibson as a real wide receiver and not just as a complete third down running back and use him in the backfield, but just as a pass catching back, I think that Darius Geis has three down potential and could be a league winner. Now, he could absolutely bust, but... There's no such thing as a league loser when you're drafting them in the sixth round. If they bust, it's completely fine. At wide receiver, I highly doubt Devontae Parker will get taken along with DJ Shark. 
there's a really low chance that both of those guys get taken. But even if they do, there still are other guys that I like, like Keenan Allen. So I'm going to wait on my wide receiver and take Darius Geis, who I'm cool with having him right behind David Montgomery. So Keenan Allen goes, Dak Prescott goes. Now it's our pick. Let's take a look at our current roster. Saquon Barkley, Aaron Jones, David Montgomery, Darius Geis. That's a lot of depth. That's a good mix between risk and a decent floor. We have a solid floor with Saquon Barkley. We pretty much saw David Montgomery's floor and David Montgomery has a lot of potential just like Darius Geis does, just like Aaron Jones does any given week. He can score you 35 points. And Saquon Barkley, tremendous floor, tremendous ceiling every single week. Never even need to worry about it. So at wide receiver, I love our wide receivers, but we could use one more, especially because to start the season, I would probably use DJ Shark or Devontae Parker or whatever wide receiver I take here as my flex instead of David Montgomery. So for me, AJ Green, way too injury prone. We don't know what's going to happen with him. Plus, I'd rather get Tyler Boyd in the next round. Debo Samuel, he got injured. If you haven't seen my injury video about Debo Samuel and the impact on not only him, but also the rest of the 49ers, definitely go check that video out when this video is done. I'll leave a link in the description below. And Marquise Brown is a little too risky. Brandon Cooks, too many unknowns there. And as we get into Michael Gallup and Tyler Boyd, there's a good chance that they are there by our next pick, although I'm not completely counting on it because there's probably a 50% chance that they don't make it to my next pick. And knowing how this draft has went, I'm sure that they're gonna get taken before my next pick. So it's between Shark and Devontae Parker for me. I do think that Devontae Parker is a little bit safer, not on a week to week basis, but just on the season as a whole. I think he has a much more secured role and we know exactly what's gonna happen there. We saw him do okay, even when Preston Williams was doing very, very good. And Preston Williams tore his ACL halfway into the season, so we know he's not going to be there to be a threat to Devontae Parker. He's just going to be there kind of going 3 for 30, 4 for 40 every week. For DJ Shark, he definitely has a ton of potential, but at the same time, we don't know exactly what's going to happen with this Jaguars offense. We're not exactly sure how they're going to be. And even though the Dolphins offense will actually probably be worse than the Jaguars offense, we already have seen what Devontae Parker can do on a very bad Dolphins offense. He was completely fine. With DJ Shark, if they're even worse, we don't know exactly what is going to happen. But at the same time, they weren't great last year and Shark was still good. And I feel like Shark has more upside on the season as a whole than Devontae Parker does. DJ Shark is a third year wide receiver, which historically is when wide receivers have the greatest chance of breaking out. It's their third year. And DJ Shark is going in to his third season. And we already have Calvin Ridley and Chris Godwin. So I'm okay taking a riskier player, knowing that if he's not great, I have two starters that are going to be completely fine. So this is a little riskier team. I don't normally go with this much risk, but because I'm so happy starting out with Saquon Barkley, Aaron Jones, Chris Godwin, and Calvin Ridley, and having depth at running back to back up Aaron Jones in case he doesn't start out the season so hot or anything like that, I'm cool with taking this much risk knowing that I still have a lot of safety with my starters. So we're gonna take Shark here. If you wanna take Devontae Parker, that's completely fine, but I'm going with Chark. So, Zach Ertz goes, DeAndre Swift, followed by another tight end, Darren Waller, Devontae Parker goes, AJ Green, Damian Williams, a little early for him for sure, Marquise Brown, Gronk goes, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Brandon Cooks, J.K. Dobbins, Hayden Hurst is the fourth tight end in the last two rounds to go, Tom Brady, Debo Samuel, Jarvis Landry, all go, and now it is our pick. So, looking at tight end, Evan Ingram's there. Not a fan of him because he definitely has a better chance of getting hurt this season than not getting hurt, and there's not many players you can say that about. 
at quarterback. We normally don't target quarterbacks this early, and I don't like the value there. I'm not a fan of taking the quarterback this early because Matt Ryan, in my opinion, is just as good as Josh Allen, who's just as good as Matt Stafford, who you can get really, really late into drafts. So we're not taking one there. Now, we do have more running backs on our roster than wide receivers, and our running backs are probably better than our wide receivers, but there still is more risk with running backs than wide receivers. So ideally, I would like to get a running back here if possible. And looking here, the guys who I like are Ronald Jones because Dare, the receiving back, is just a receiving back. And they even used Ronald Jones quite a bit in the receiving game last season. And with Tom Brady being there, even though Ronald Jones might not have many designed plays for him to catch the ball, Tom Brady will love throwing dump offs to him, no doubt about it. And Ronald Jones is the most talented running back on that roster for sure. Alexander Madison, you're purely banking on Dalvin Cook either holding out or getting injured. If that happens, he is an RB1 for every week that Dalvin Cook is out. But other than that, he is not even worthy of being a flex player. Matt Breida, he's okay. I just talked about him on my Twitter account, which once again, link in the description below if you'd like to follow me there. I do like him more than Jordan Howard because he's going to be used in the receiving game quite a bit, and I just think he's a better running back than Jordan Howard. James White, even though this New England offense won't be as good as they were last season, Stidham loves to throw to the running backs, and not only that, but young quarterbacks who are getting their first starts historically always love to throw to the running back, no matter what type of player they are, just because it's a lot safer and everything. So you add in the fact that not only is he going to be starting for pretty much the first time, but also that even in college, he has loved to throw short routes and throw to the running back, and that the Patriots coaching staff clearly loves to get running backs targets. So James White is a pretty safe player in my opinion. And yeah, those are the running backs who I think could be worth it. At wide receiver, I like Gallup. Johnson is going pretty early now. This is a little early for my liking, knowing that there's guys like Gallup and Tyler Boyd also available. So like I said, Gallup is there. His ADP makes literally no sense at all. He was a second year wide receiver last year. So he's a third year wide receiver this year. So he has a pretty good chance of absolutely breaking out. He's on an offense that will probably pass it more than they have in recent years because Mike McCarthy loves to pass the ball. Yes, CeeDee Lamb is there, but Randall Cobb is no longer there and Jason Witten is no longer there either. So yes, CeeDee Lamb's there, but he's a rookie and rookie wide receivers don't usually do the best. And not to mention, Michael Gallup is clearly going to be better than him this upcoming season. So there's that. And then you also add in the fact that Last season, Michael Gallup was the wide receiver 17 in PPR scoring on a per game basis. Why is he going as the wide receiver 35? Are you telling me that one rookie wide receiver, a rookie wide receiver being on this team outweighs the departure of Randall Cobb and Jason Witten so much that he is worth going from the wide receiver 17 as a sophomore wide receiver as a sophomore wide receiver, he was the wide receiver 17. So you're telling me that the difference between CeeDee Lamb and Jason Witten and Randall Cobb, along with Michael Gallup now being a third year receiver, that difference is so big that he is worth going from the wide receiver 17 to the wide receiver 35, according to most places PPR ADP. If anything, I think that he's in a better situation now because sure, CeeDee Lamb's there, but Randall Cobb and Jason Witten are gone and I think that pretty much evens out. Now you add in the fact that they have a new coach who will probably like to throw up more and you add in the fact that Michael Gallup is a third year wide receiver. I think that he will be better than he was last season. So if anything, he should be a borderline wide receiver one, but instead he's going as a flex player pretty much, a borderline flex player. So I like Tyler Boyd too. He is a pretty safe player. He's finished as a wide receiver too for the last two years straight. 
and now he has what should be an improvement at the quarterback position. But I think there is a little more upside with Gallup, considering that he's probably more talented and just in what is a much safer offense. We know that this offense is going to be good. We can't say the same thing about Cincinnati. So give me Gallup over Boyd. If you want to take Boyd, that's okay. But I do think that Gallup is certainly the right pick here. So we'll take Gallup. Keyshawn Vaughn goes, guys, he is not going to be the starter for this team. Okay, he took Ronald Jones too, just to troll me because I wanted Ronald Jones. But taking Keyshawn Vaughn and Ronald Jones, that's a strange strategy. You shouldn't be taking Keyshawn Vaughn, guys. He's not going to be the starter on this team. Ronald Jones was actually decent last year. Keyshawn Vaughn is a rookie, and he was not good in college, okay? His college numbers were heavily inflated by a few games against awful run defenses. Teams like to say that, oh, Keyshawn Vaughn was in the SEC, and that is the most powerful and most dominant college conference. Well, yeah, you're right. That is true. Like, you're not wrong there. And if he put up the numbers that he did mainly against those SEC teams, sure, that'd be pretty convincing. But he put up those numbers against these awful out-of-conference teams, mostly. That's nothing special. He was not great. Ronald Jones is better. He's going to be the starter. He is worth it. Keyshawn Vaughn is not. So stay away from Keyshawn Vaughn, please, guys. If you want to take Dare, the receiving back, I don't really think it's a great pick, but I actually understand the reason why you might want to take him because Tom Brady being there means that Keyshawn Vaughn could get a lot of targets. There is no reason to take Keyshawn Vaughn. I'm not targeting Dare, but... I would actually understand if you wanted him. I don't understand why anyone would want Keyshawn Vaughn. Stay away from him, please. So we have four really, really solid wide receivers. Um, pretty much all young wide receivers. These are all either third year or fourth year wide receivers. So we've got a lot of young wide receivers here. At running back, we have four as well, but they are a little riskier. There's so much more depth at wide receiver in the mid and late rounds than running back. So even though, yeah, Darius Geis was taken ahead of Michael Gallup and DJ Chark, that's just because running back value dips extremely quickly. I would feel more confident having DJ Chark or Michael Gallup in my lineup than Darius Geis. So we do want to get another running back here because we feel very confident in our wide receivers. And even though I do like my running backs, I think that improving my running back depth right now is more important than improving my wide receiver depth. So first, actually, let's look at tight end. Yeah, still nothing there. Tyler Higby's the best player there, but he should make it to my next pick. And actually, eh, he might not make it to my next pick. There's probably a 50% chance he does. So even if he doesn't make it, that's fine because there's more value really late into the draft, like in the 13th, 14th, 15th round. So no worries there. We're going to take a look at running back here and guys who I like. Madison for a pretty risky play. He could either be an RB1 for a few weeks or just do absolutely nothing. We don't know. It all depends on Dalvin Cook. But right now, I just want a safe running back who, if Darius Geis tears his ACL again, if David Montgomery is just used completely improperly, if Aaron Jones goes down, or if he just completely gets his role taken by A.J. Dillon and Jamal Williams somehow, I just want a safe player who I can plug in and who might not have the chance of going off for 18 points a game throughout the season, but who I know I can start and feel okay about it for a few weeks. And that is James White because his role is secured. We've seen him be used in a pass catching role for years now, and that's not gonna change this season. He's not reliant on touchdowns. He just gets targets and receiving yards, and that's not gonna change with Stidham under center. Stidham's going to be completely fine for James White's fantasy football outlook this season. So give me James White here. Then Sonny Michelle goes, his teammate, followed by Tyler Higby. Yep, kind of knew he wouldn't be there. Then Matt Grady goes, Matt Ryan, Will Fuller, Jerry Judy, Evan Ingram, Deontay Johnson, Tyler Boyd. Love that pick. Absolute steal in the 10th round. Jordan Howard goes, Julian Edelman, Darius Slayton, Tevin Coleman, Marvin Jones, love him as a sleeper wide receiver. He is so good when Matthew Stafford is there. 
Seriously, his ADP makes even less sense than Michael Gallup's. Marvin Jones was around the wide receiver 15 before Matthew Stafford got injured last season. So we can expect Matthew Stafford to be healthy for this season, right? We're not expecting him to get injured. And Marvin Jones was something like the wide receiver 14 or something. It was somewhere in between like 12 and 20. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but yeah. So he was producing numbers as a wide receiver too before Stafford got hurt. And now he's going as like the wide receiver 40. It makes no sense at all. He literally finished last season missing three games, having Matthew Stafford hurt for half of the season, still finishing as the wide receiver 35 around, I believe. This is like the worst case scenario. Stafford is injured for half the season. Marvin Jones misses three games and he literally finished about five, six spots ahead of what his ADP is. There is no way that Marvin Jones doesn't return value unless he himself misses over half of the season. And the upside that you have, I won't even call it upside. I'll just call it an average situation, a predictable situation. Stafford plays a full season and Marvin Jones is used as the wide receiver two behind Kenny Galladay. I think that he's easily a fantasy football wide receiver two in that situation. And he's being drafted as a bench player, not even flex. He's being drafted as a bench player. I absolutely love him. Twitter is giving him quite a bit of hype, but not nearly enough. Until he is going in the fifth or sixth round, he is a sleeper. Really, he is. Then we have Drew Brees and Marlon Mack go. Fine picks there. Now we do have Alexander Madison there. I like that because there is a lot of potential with that pick. Let's take a look at wide receiver. So CeeDee Lamb's there, who I like, but we already have Michael Gallup, so I'm not sure if that's really worth it. Henry Ruggs is all right. Jameson Crowder is all right, but none of those guys I'm really liking. I like Michael Pittman. I like Rieger or Rager, however it's pronounced. I like Nikhil Harry, but all those guys are later. So at running back, I do think Alexander Madison is certainly worth it. Quarterback, we might take one with our next pick. Maybe we'll wait until the 12th round though. And at tight end, no point in taking a tight end here because I think Noah Fant, TJ Hawkinson, Jaseki, and all those guys are pretty much just as good as Hunter Henry and Jared Cook. And I can get them in the 15th round if I wanted to. So we'll wait on a tight end there. At running back, we are happy to take Alexander Madison as a guy who has potential to be starting ahead of Aaron Jones in my roster if Dalvin Cook either gets injured or holds out, which there is a pretty good chance that that happens. Josh Allen goes, who I kind of wanted. I was hoping that I'd either get him with this pick or with my 12th round pick. Looks like we're not going to get him, but there's no worries because there's other quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers, like Stafford, even Carson Wentz I'm okay with. Hunter Henry goes, we're not targeting him, so that's not a problem. Zach Moss is there, Latavius Murray is there. Both of those guys are risky, but what do you expect from such a late pick right now? There's no safe players here, except Tariq Cohen has actually produced for quite a bit of time, so he's a little safe, but not a ton of super safe players. I mean, we could take a defense. I really never have taken a defense here, but I just don't see a lot of value here. And actually, we only have one bench spot, and I want to use that on a tight end because I'm a huge fan of having a backup tight end this season because I love some of these later tight ends, and they can even go in your flex spot if you need them to. So I want that backup tight end there. So... We're out of bench spots, basically, which means that we need a starting tight end, a quarterback, and a defense and a kicker. Looking at quarterback, is it worth to take the quarterback there instead of the defense? Because at tight end, I would honestly probably rather have Fant than Cook, but there's a chance that Fant goes before my 12th round pick, 
So maybe it's just worth it to take Fant here. I plan on pairing Fant, who's a little risky. I think he has top five tight end potential, but because of all the competition in Denver and because they might go pretty run heavy, I do think that he is a little risky and I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't finish as a tight end one. So I do want Goddard, who I know is a very safe player. So you know what? We're going to go with Noah Fant here. I'm kind of tempted to take the 49ers defense there, but we're not going to do it. We're going to stick to what my values are and not taking a defense in the 11th round. And we'll take Noah Fant there. I think it's a solid pick. So we'll take Noah Fant. Carry on Johnson goes, Aaron Rodgers goes, who I kind of wanted. Tariq Cohen, San Francisco defense, Philip Lindsay, CeeDee Lamb, the rookie, who I love. Latavius Murray, Zach Moss, another rookie. Matt Stafford goes. I wanted him. Pittsburgh and Buffalo defense both go. Henry Ruggs, Jameson Crowder, Emmanuel Sanders, and Christian Kirk all go in a row. Little wide receiver run right there. And Carson Wentz also goes. So unfortunately, the three quarterbacks who I wanted most all went. But I'm going to show you that there is absolutely no issue with waiting this late to take a quarterback because Big Ben is still there and will still be there at our next pick. So there is no issue there. Not to mention, if Big Ben gets hurt or anything, if he re-injures himself, which by the way, there's a very minimal chance of that happening, his injury should not be affecting him. It mainly happens in baseball players, so it's very weird that he even had this injury happen to him anyway. But this injury occurs when you try to sidearm these weird throws and have a really weird arm formation not even a Philip Rivers throwing formation. It's even weirder than that. And I doubt Big Ben's going to be throwing any of those kind of passes because he knows it's not worth it knowing that he could re-injure himself just for showing off a little bit, throwing some weird sidearm pass. It's kind of like those Patrick Mahomes passes. But yeah, I don't think Big Ben's going to get re-injured. He should be really, really good. And if he does get re-injured, Daniel Jones should be on the waiver wire. So obviously this is a mock draft, so I'm not actually going to pick up Daniel Jones if Big Ben gets hurt, but we're just assuming and pretending that this is a real draft. So Big Ben there is fine, but I'm sure that he'll be there by my next pick. So we're not even going to bother there. And I guess now we should either take a backup tight end, but honestly, like I don't want Jared Cook. I don't want Austin Hooper. I want either Hawkinson or preferably Goddard. So I'm just going to wait. It's not even worth it to take a quarterback right now. So I am going to take a defense because we can wait on our quarterback or our tight end. So we're going to take a defense and it is between New England and Baltimore here. The thing that I like about New England is that since they don't have Tom Brady, they're really going to run super long drives. They're going to give it to the running backs a lot, whether they're dump offs or handoffs, they're really going to rely on their running backs and they're going to be in lower scoring games than they're used to. And I think that's very valuable. And even though the Ravens might have more touchdowns, they're going to give up more points. So I'm a fan of taking New England defense here ahead of Baltimore. So we'll take New England defense. I almost never do this, but we're taking a defense fairly early, and now it's time for either our quarterback or our tight end. But worst case scenario, Goddard gets taken, and we can take Johnu Smith or Jarwin or Jaseki or Hawkinson. No worries there. But if Big Ben gets taken and Daniel Jones gets taken, I really don't want to rely on Joe Burrow or Jimmy Garoppolo with the idea that Debo Samuel might not be healthy this season. If he's healthy, I think Garoppolo's fine but we don't completely know if that's gonna happen. So I do want to take my quarterback here ahead of my backup tight end because I'm not completely fine with any quarterback right here, but I am pretty much completely fine with any tight end here. And I know that there will be one available next round who I like. So let's go with Big Ben here. After him, Justin Jefferson, the rookie goes, Jared Cook, Baker, Daniel Jones, another rookie, Michael Pittman goes, Daryl Henderson, Darrell Henderson, whatever you want to say. Drew Locke, Tony Pollard, Chicago defense, two kickers in a row go, Justin Tucker, Harrison Butker, LA Chargers defense goes, Greg Zerline, Minnesota and Denver defense both go. 
Will Lutz goes, and now is our pick. We are definitely going to take our backup tight end ahead of our kicker, even though I doubt Goddard will go. I still do think that, you know, a kicker, like we're not even going to try to predict kicker success. So give me Goddard because I don't want the 0.001% chance of him being taken to even have a chance of happening. Let me just secure Goddard so I know that I'll have him on my bench. Robbie Gold goes, Anthony Miller goes, cool. Now it's time for me to take my kicker. Atlanta offense should be pretty good. Young Hoku was doing phenomenal last season with Atlanta, and now they have Todd Gurley, so a little improved offense, but they're still not going to be phenomenal. I also like Zane Gonzalez, that Arizona offense should be fast-paced, but not too good. I think that Houston offense will not be as fast-paced as they used to be, so I'm not a huge fan of Care Baron. Matt Prater, solid. Elliott, solid. All those guys are solid. They're on solid offenses, but... I'll just take Young Hoku here just because he was really good last season. So why not take him here? So we take him. Then the Bucks defense go. Zane Gonzalez, Fair Baron, Austin Hooper, Jake Elliott, Justin Jackson, Chase Edmonds, and Matt Prater all go. So now let's take one last look at our team. At quarterback, Big Ben, is that probably the worst starting quarterback of any team here? Yeah, probably is. But on any team that does not have Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott, or Kyler Murray, I feel like the difference between Big Ben and their starting quarterback is about one point per game. Sure, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray, they might have a few points per game advantage over me, but everyone else, I feel like Big Ben is almost as good as them. And the only risk there is him getting injured. And there should be guys on the waiver wire, not to mention Jimmy Garoppolo didn't get taken. And by the time Big Ben gets injured, if he does get injured, we'll know whether or not Debo Samuel is healthy or not. So we can take Jimmy Garoppolo and be confident that he'll be a solid player. So quarterback, happy with that. Saquon Barkley and Aaron Jones at our starting running back position. That is very, very good. I love the mix between a solid floor, but tremendous upside. Like there is a realistic possibility that Saquon and Aaron Jones finish as the RB1 and RB2 in PPR scoring this season. I'm not saying it's likely. I'm not even saying that it's going to happen, but there's probably a three, four, 5% chance that it does happen. At wide receiver, Chris Godwin, Calvin Ridley, once again, love the mix between a solid floor with tremendous upside. I do believe that there is a chance that both of these guys finish as top five wide receivers. Julio Jones is being drafted as a top five wide receiver and Calvin Ridley was on par with him when they were playing together last season. Now he's a third year wide receiver. Who is going to say that there is not a chance that Calvin Ridley finishes as a top five wide receiver? I think there's a chance. Chris Godwin, we already saw him fall out last season, so we don't even need to question how good he's going to do this season. I'm pretty confident in him. Love that right there. Noah Fant, Risky tight end, but we have Goddard to back him up, so no worries there. David Montgomery as our flex. I'll actually probably switch out him for Gallup or Shark if this were a real league. That's what I would do at least. I'd switch him out week one and week two just to see exactly if David Montgomery is a success and is going to be used properly this season. And if he is, love him as the flex. He has potential to be an RB1, but I think it's a little more realistic to predict a solid RB2 season out of him. Maybe a top 15 running back season in PPR scoring. I think that's a little more realistic, but still has a solid chance of happening. Young Hoku and New England defense, both probably top five at their position. Actually, Young Hoku, I don't even know what he's going to be. He might be bottom five. He might be top five. I don't really know, but New England defense should be top five amongst all defenses. And then we have Geis, risky, but he's my fourth running back, so we're willing to take risk there. And we also have Alexander Madison, who's another risky pick, but no worries because we have James White right ahead of him, who is a safe player that I know if I have a ton of buys and injuries in one week, I can put in James White and he'll get by and get me probably about 10 points that week. Not going to get me 25 points, but he's not going to get me two points either. 
Shark and Gallup, love them. I'd be fine if one of them was starting on my roster. I'd be fine if one of them was my wide receiver too, if it meant that my running backs and or a tight end is absolutely stacked. Obviously, I don't want Michael Gallup or DJ Chark to be my wide receiver too if my running backs are just average. But if I go super running back heavy, I'm flattered to have Michael Gallup or DJ Chark at my wide receiver too because I think they'll definitely get by. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Once again, if you want more content, subscribing to me and following me on Twitter will definitely get you a lot more content. I put out daily content here on YouTube and on Twitter, so there's a lot of content out there right now for you guys and a lot more content coming out in the future. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like because it's a free way to just show that you enjoyed this video and it really helps out smaller YouTubers like myself. I can't stress enough how much they really do help Seriously, for all of the smaller YouTubers that you watch, I do encourage you to like their videos if you enjoyed them. And with that being said, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what pick you would have done differently or if you think that I made the best pick at every pick. If that's the case, let me know that, but I'm sure that there's something that you would have changed about my draft. So let me know what you thought of it what pick would you have changed? Would you have taken a different fifth round pick, a different eighth round pick, whatever. Let me know what it is. I want to know what you guys think of this draft and what you guys think of these different players this season. I'll make sure to like and reply to every single comment that I get. I appreciate you guys watching this and I will see you next time. Peace.